with our monthly uh, uh, environmental protection Ash? committee meeting. And uh, I am I happy to see everyone through? on board. So meeting uh, call to order at 7.07 .07 p.m. And I want to welcome everyone tonight on this cold night. Thank God we are all in our little cozy spots. Um, and and I welcome everyone. Everyone, you know, that's on here know that I am the uh, chair, current chair of the Environmental Protection Committee. And, um, you know, everyone else can just say who they are and as acknowledgement and roll call at the same time. So we're gonna do- um, Okay. Yeah. So. Okay, well, I'll go for it. Rod Herbert, environmental committee member, long time resident, happy to be here. Okay, thank you. That's the travel man. Yeah. Huh? He stays on the Mr. road. Matthews is always traveling. He stays on the go, yes. Yes. So, Bishop, you can go ahead. Okay. So, you know, I'm always just Bishop Gonzalez. Debbie, I'm always just Bishop Gonzalez. <laughs> nothing much more to say. Okay. All okay. right. And, Teresa, are you on? Yes, I'm. I'm here. Okay, so you can go ahead and acknowledge. Oh. Yeah. Hi, I, I think you all know me, uh, Tara, Teresa, here. Okay. Ready, ready to protect the environment with you all. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We better yes, be Teresa. ready. We've got yes. a lot of protecting to do. Yeah. So um. Okay, and Khalid is on. Okay, Khalid, um, one question for you. Were yes. you able to send the information to the intern that was on our October meeting? Yeah, she, uh, you know, I didn't get any correspondence from her, so. No? No. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's fine. Um, I guess she'll connect at some point. I'm not sure, maybe she's a little busy. Um, okay, so we will move on to our uh, old business. Um, and outstanding issues and updates. Um, the last meeting that we had, which was in October, um, we talked about our drainage system because of the um, overwhelming amount of rain that we <laughs> inherited over a period of time. And of course, our drainage system was inundated with water um everywhere and um you know we had some concerns that we raised about that um there's some information that i received from dante uh with regards to the contact that mr herbert had provided i think you provided the information to dante Yes, I did. I, th I believe I, it was a report. Right. I can't remember, a report that so, I sent. Yeah. So I, uh, I actually um, had a follow up with him uh, last week with regards to you know the status of the uh, presentation or the presenter, and mm -hmm. um, I think he was just making the presentation. I mean the connection uh, or follow up call and. Um, it looks like we probably won't have someone until maybe January or February meeting um, okay. because, you know, this month is totally out of the question. Um, so I think, you know, that was the information that he provided me with, you know, by email. Okay. And um, so hopefully we can get, but what we need to do as a committee, we need to come up with some of the questions that we would want to ask you know, at that time, I think in the October meeting, uh, minutes, I had some information in there and, um, you know, related to the water problems and, you know, some questions that we had. So maybe we can take, you know, use that as well as any additional information that, 
you know, you, you, any one of you may have, um, I would yeah. probably have some as well. So if we can coordinate that once we have, you know, a presenter or try to work on that right now so that, you know, we have those things in place um, when, you know, the uh, meeting ha has been coordinated. So um, the other thing that I noticed with, you know, the rain that we had, there was a lot of ponding and you know, um, it's normal when it rains, but the areas that, that this ponding is happening, it's, I mean, it's where people have to cross the street from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. And it's not just one, it's, it seems as though it's, it's happening at all of these crosswalks. So, I mean, if you're in a wheelchair, if you're a senior and you, you, you're not able to jump over that water, you would have to find an area that you <laughs> probably would have to walk further up or, you know, to get to your destination or the cross, you know, to get to where you're going. So that's problematic. And then the other thing that I noticed was a lot of leaves and, you know, in the drainage areas. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, that is very problematic because, you know, if sanitation doesn't pull it out when they are picking up garbage or I don't even know if they sweep the area, you know, it remains there and it just builds up. And I noticed that in a lot of area, not just our area, but even traveling on the buses, you know, you see some of these things all over. And, you know, it's problematic because once that gets into the drain, it builds up. And, um, you know, this is where our water system, our sewer system becomes problematic because you have all that stuff in there. And, you know, once that water starts rising and there's nowhere for it to go, it goes into, you know, people's basements and, you know, other areas that, so, you know, I think that um, there's definitely a problem there. And since we acknowledge it, maybe, you know, we need to keep, you know, pressing on that because that's one of the problem right there, getting all that, you know, stuff built up in the, in our drainage system. And the other thing that I noticed was that some of the drains, you know, with the, the way that they, uh, put the asphalt on the ground, you know, it's not, it's some areas it's problematic because of the way, it, you know, the, the, the drain is located and the way they pave the streets, you know, so that's problematic too. So maybe those are things, some of the things that, um, you know, they need to revisit and when they're, um, you know, paving the streets, um, because, you know, I noticed that a lot of the water sits in and it sits there for a while unless maybe one of the neighbors or someone would come and push it out with a broom so yeah. that it goes, you know, wherever that drain is. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's not able to do that. On Yeah, so um, that's another issue that I noticed. Um, I don't know if anyone else has anything to add to that, but uh, yeah. So, so um, one of the things this time of year um, yeah, you know the as you identified the leaves that come down off the trees. Yeah, right? um, the city, the, the DEP does have a routine schedule that they do follow to clean um, sewers. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's pretty, you know, sporadic and and whatnot. But what, what I've seen, uh, but there are sewers that uh, a neighbor and myself we constantly call. Yeah. Periodically in order to make sure that they are clean and ready for uh, the next rainfall. And, yeah. and that's something that people should do is if they do see a packed catch basin on the corner, uh, they yeah. should contact the DEP. Right. Also, the DEP is they're going through a well, it's been ongoing for a couple of years now, a, a project where they are. It's a capital project where they are making sure the curbs are compliant with ADA um, rules and regs. Yeah. And with that, they're, they're installing a new um, grading, and the grading is not a wide open mouth grading. Um, it's a little more restrictive in order to prevent uh, items or particulates to go down into the, um, into the catch basin. So 
you know, with that change, yeah, you, we're going to see the catch basins clog up a lot faster. So this change, mm -hmm. what would it cause to for that to happen? I mean, the change that they have, new change that they're making. Is it so, some type of a lift that they putting there or? So no. So there was a lawsuit right. uh, that was filed. And the result of the lawsuit was that the city was going to uh, implement a capital improvement project where all of the curbs that did not comply with ADA rules, mm -hmm. there was access for wheelchairs and non-slip surfaces and so forth. Uh, they were going to attend to all of those and you know, make necessary repairs and or adjustments. And that also included changing the catch basin because they decided to take advantage of another program they had, which was to reduce the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the matter going into the catch basin. So that's when they put in the more restrictive type catch basins. So it's a, it's a two for project. And this is between the DEP and DOT. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So did they start that project already? Because I'd really like to see what it looks like. Yeah, so this project has been going on for a couple of years now. It's, it's ongoing. Um, as we talk, I'll see if I can find something uh, with regards okay. to the lawsuit and that project, and I'll send it. I'll, so I'll take a search while during the meeting. I'll I'll see if I can find it and I'll send it to um to the district office and to everybody. Oh, okay. you, you, you could see them being installed quite locally. I mean, there's one, mm -hmm. for example, on um Sullivan and um uh what is it, Franklin Avenue. There was one installed. That's where we put in the garden. Remember, um before like two years ago, the Environmental Protection Committee got a grant to put in a garden. Um, and I worked at Martina and Christian LeBeau, they got that grant and we put it in down on Sullivan on the corner. And then they came to do that project and they dug up our garden and we had to move it suddenly. Um, so you could see how they, you know, they're putting in these like bumpy, I guess it's for, you know, so blind people, people without sight can, can cross. They, there's, that's one corner where they, they've done it. They did quite an extensive amount of work there in that area on, you know, Washington, Franklin, uh, Sullivan Empire. And then, you know, it seemed like everything was great and done. It took them more than five years to do all that work. And then it caved in. Wow. Ago in front of McDonald's on Empire. Between McKeever, you know, off of McKeever, across from, so it's a little. That's a little. That's something that seems to be happening, and I think, I don't know why all these cave-ins are happening. There's an extensive amount, but there's a lot of construction in our neighborhood, and there's a lot of. It seems like has been uh, constant. One of the things I've noticed is, which I've spoken in here to you all about, is the concrete. You know, the washouts have been happening a lot of heavy equipment and it's resulted in quite a bit of chaos, you know, in, in our area. We haven't, you know, so it seems like that project on, um, on Bedford and Sullivan that they've completed that finally today, just today, they were there today. And when I came home, I was, I was out all day. They were, they were gone. The, the workers that were, fixing the um that particular area of the collapse that collapse there were three collapses there total um and the third one is was fixed but all the the trucks for the construction project that's happening there were in that area now so like maybe five heavy trucks on Bedford again and they moved the bus stop um just this week they've done it's it's happening quite fast there, but the biggest concern is the the collapse, and I think it's related to uh, to this area having so much concrete poured down the the drains, you know, to, into the system. I don't know. Rod knows more. I've seen a lot of his friends from Con Ed, you know, twenty four hour trucks out there, 
trying to keep things moving. So people haven't lost electricity, but it's it's not pleasant. Okay. Tough so on the we will uh, continue to follow up on all of those uh, outstanding issues. With uh, I'm sure that the uh, community board office has. Um... Is Dante sending you reports, Debbie? Because you know he reported that he gets reports continuously about this, and I asked him to forward to me so I could send to my neighbors, and um, he didn't. But I wondered if he was maybe sending them to you to forward because which report are you speaking are you referring to he says that he gets reports he was getting reports from um i don't know if it's the dot department of conference conservation you know whatever the status is on these on the collapses that have been happening you know the um it's basically the the, the sewer collapses you know in the middle of the street that's what's happening and there was a big um on the night, the first night that things froze, the the uh, site in front of McDonald's that's collapsed, there was a, mm -hmm. uh, a water main break. So the whole street was flooded with water. That was the first night it froze. It, I guess, I think it was the day after Thanksgiving, sat Saturday after Thanksgiving. Oh, uh, well, I didn't get anything from him I like, I, I as like yet. To, so. to give us any reports that he's receiving, I, I wish we could see those because apparently he gets them. That's what he said at the executive board meeting. Well, usually, you know, the um, whatever reports, they would go to the uh, board office and then they, you know, would um, send a copy to the, uh, you know, committee. But I haven't received anything as yet, so I don't know what he has. But um, so he hasn't you sent know, you any anything. Normally, else? what I I do is I follow up on the things that we discuss at the meeting with them. Um, so those are the information that I you know would get information for feedback on the you know pertaining to um let's say Sullivan and Bedford over there. Um, I believe he sent something saying that, you know, the project was almost completed and um, yeah, you know, I that they, they would continue to follow up on it. So hopefully, you know, we can uh, get more information on that in terms of, you know, where they are. And um, it would be good if we could get the I would like to see those reports and I know my neighbors would. So maybe we can ask for the request, uh, put in a request. Khalid, can you? Um, yes, I can follow up with Dante. Follow up, yeah. So that we can uh, take a look at those that information and see what's in there. Yeah. I'm not sure if maybe maybe he sent it to the, the transportation committee. I don't know. Um, but it would be good to see I'm what's in there. Yeah. And um, okay, so... We'll wait to hear. Does anyone have any uh, uh, information to add to that? Anyone else? Okay. I, I I don't, Debbie, I don't have any information to add to that. I just wanted to know. Um, I think uh -huh. the street sweeping or cleaning schedule is uh -huh. off in, in our neighborhood. Because uh -huh. normally, you know, it will be alternate side of the right. street right. Um, parking. And so they can, the, the cleaning trucks can, can come down. And what I have noticed is that it's not happening, you know, as regularly as they should. So I'm uh -huh. not sure if they change the schedule um, since COVID or, you know, what is happening. That's why all that debris comes when the rain falls. Because it's it's just there sitting in the gutter. Well, yeah, the, the streets I, are not being clean. I don't know if you see it on your side. I know we see it over here. Where, all the where, time. Are, you, where are you? The Bishop? leaves where, are. Where what neighborhood? I'm on Union Street. Okay. Um, yeah, we've, I'm we've in Crown Heights. Heights. I'm I'm in your neighborhood. 
Oh, yeah, we, we've had in our area a, a problem, too, with um, we've got a lot of the, the, the cars that are um, yes. lift or Not whatever. Moving. We've got a lot of those, and they don't move for um, for alternate sides. So all the leaves are just left there. And if the, exactly. the neighbor who lives there has to clean it, you know, otherwise, it's a lot of leaves right now, too. So they have to, to clean it and they can't clean it like used to be, you know, everybody moved so you could clean a little bit in front of your house, you know, usually that at that time, but that doesn't happen anymore. So you've got to wait until somebody might rent the car to run out and clean when those groups like Lyft, for example, are supposed to be taking cleaning their, their spot that they paid the city this minimal amount of money for. They're not taking care of their, um, spots i know that's brought up in transportation but it's it's also a environmental issue that's relevant to this topic now like uh bishop brings up right right and so and, bishop what i've noticed on my block we do have alternate side parking um on thursdays one side and on fridays the other so i mean and i know sometimes some some of the vehicles that you know they may not be someone that live on the block they remain there so what I've seen the sweeper do, he goes around. I mean, he'll sweep, but he goes around those vehicles. But usually there's a sanitation um, inspector or supervisor driving around in his vehicle after, you know, the sweeper goes by, um, you know, to see what I would think that they would, you know, issue a violation or something. But I'm not sure, you know, what happens in that case. But I mean, I would definitely call sanitation if, you know, there was, I mean, if there was vehicles parked there when it's, it's supposed to be, you know, alternate side for the sweeper to come through because, you know, it's something that is, you know, it's supposed to happen. It's, it's not happening and they don't get tickets like ever. Uh, okay, so that's I guess. Those rent, that's those lift cars, right? Yeah, we have like, we have a lot because they're putting them on all the corners. So we have these little tiny residential streets. So every corner has like three or four. Yes. So it's, and it winds up being like 20 spots in this small area. And, and when, and because they're on the corner, um, it has an adverse effect on the water flowing, you know, freely, especially yeah. when they're, are the, the leaves. So I, I think the idea of having these cards might have been brilliant, but now it is affecting the environment. So either they're going to have to clean the car underneath those cars, move them and clean them, you know, because of course the, the, the big sweepers can't do it. So our communities compromise because we have those cars. Those cars don't move. The sweeper can't sweep. The leaves are there. The water comes. It backs up. The drains are in trouble. I mean, that's a domino effect right there. So yeah. maybe we just need to just well, point that, that out in in some kind of letter. So that that would be you know um, an issue for Dante to bring up at his service at the service cabinet meeting. Exactly. Because it is a service issue. So, um, exactly. you know, so Khalid, um, if you can uh, provide Dante with that information, because I think that um, it was discussed before, um, but apparently it's not, it, it it's still, you know, an issue and um, that needs to be, you know, um, looked into. Yes. So okay. if you can, um, yeah. And what's the location for that? They're, they're all it's, it's on, well, well, it's on Seth Sullivan, um, um, Terry is saying, but I'm on Union and it's it's all over. Do we have a list? Maybe we need to know, is there a list of where the cars are in our, you know, community board nine? Yeah, transportation was was working on this and there, there's a list but they're adding them consistently and it seems like our area is like more of a area where they're putting them all in 
like there nobody on park slope supposedly and other neighborhoods has them it's just it just seems to be really a lot here only like unfairly so we need, yeah De debbie i think we just need to know um you know i well, I, I, guess I don't we need know to, that we need to find out more as to what you know, so where, why where are, are they, they in they? certain areas and not others? And what is the reason, you know, for them, you know, being there? Um, so, I mean, it sounds as though I'm not sure if transportation has any information to provide on that, but I guess we can more than likely bring it up at, um, you know, the next uh, general board meeting or even, you know, have, you know, the... Um, Dante follow up with um DOT, whether it's DOT or, or you know, whoever, um, in terms of what, you know, what can be done in order to get the, the streets swept when these vehicles are parked there. Um yeah. you know, it's crazy. I mean, if everyone else has to move their vehicles, why would you bring something that is just sitting there? What are what are the privilege that they get that other people don't get? that reside in the community, you know? So, um, yeah, so I guess, you know, we'll follow up on that to find out, you know, what what can be done. Um, I see two hands up. Um, first, I'm gonna start with Twyla Ware. I'm not sure, you know, if you are. Hi, I'm um, a community board member. I was just, um, trying to see if any of you knew possibly how to find the youth committee link because it's only listed one place and it says that the meeting's already in progress but it's being hosted or it says that the host has a different meeting in progress and I can't seem to find it does anyone have any suggestions sorry to disrupt your meeting Khaled, would you be able yeah, to no. respond to that yeah no problem the meeting is actually canceled for this month by the committee chair so uh there oh. is it. yeah so it's just the, uh this meeting tonight okay, okay. So very sorry about that as well there's a year lip meeting a land use committee tonight because we yes. were originally scheduled for the 18th and then suddenly it got changed to this day it said the 18th on the calendar because I, I put it in my calendar Thank you all very, very much and have a very Sorry, Twyla. You Thanks as you. well. Thank you. So, Mr. Herbert, I see your hand up. Okay. So, first of all, I sent the information with regards to the lawsuit and another article. I sent it to you, Debbie, Tara, uh, to the district office. And I'm sorry, Bishop, up. I do not have your email address, but I'll have... To lead, uh, send it to you if he has your address. No problem. Okay. You're breaking out. Okay, he's good. It, it, it might, it might be me. Okay. Um. All right. Well. I'm fine. But we'll keep going. Yeah, we'll keep going. And, yeah, and if it is me. Going. And so that's that. The lawsuit is pertaining to the DEP project. Yeah, that's the, the that's for the DOT slash DEP project. Yes. And okay. The, okay. That's okay. for the compliant of the ADA. Um, yeah. Curves ADA. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, now, just to uh, follow up on what you guys are talking about with regards to the street sweeper and yeah. the cars and all those other stuff, so we have and I can say had that problem uh, uh -huh. in, in on our neighborhood because i'm on troy avenue and we had it on troy on fenimore and rutland and east 45th street and so forth so it, it, it's a lot of work but you know we threw in three or one tickets and we worked with the precinct in order to get you know some cars moved like the tractor trailer moved and they towed a truck which i was happy about but there's still others to address yeah. and you know we're going through with that all right. Also, if the street sweeper does not show up, what we do, we send in a 311 ticket and stating that a, the street sweeper was missed. And we just keep hitting them, hitting them, hitting them. And then the supervisor comes out and he basically tells us either the street sweeper broke down or this or, you know, whatever it is. 
Yeah. But once we started throwing in the tickets and, you know, we we're just relentless with it, um, they have, we have seen an improvement. All right. So cleaning the streets <laughs> is a three step process, right? It's enforcement, it's um, the alternate side, yeah. um, parking rules, and, and the street cleaning. Okay. So it's a triangle. So it's a, it's a process triangle. Yes. Any one of these processes which is not enforced or is not there, the whole plan just goes awry. So you you have to throw in 311 tickets. I know it's a pain, it's burdensome and whatnot, but unfortunately, this is what we had to result to in order to you know get the services out there. And we have seen improvement. Because what okay. I do, I normally would call uh, DSNY9, North, North yes. or South, whichever one, and I get a supervisor on the phone. Correct. Why is yeah, the we... garbage still sitting out there? You know, so, and usually I'll get a response and, you know, mm -hmm. they'll, if they leave it, they'll, he'll say, okay, someone will be back to pick it up. You know, whatever Correct. it is, I call them up, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But the, the issue with those, lift cars or those taxis unless they are parked <laughs> in a permitted Air. street or sidewalk that's a taxi stand or a lift stand station or whatever uh, yeah they have to move uh, right there's no, it's, it's, that's it they just have to move and three so one tickets to be put it, in. if it's a lift spot you know if it's a lift spot they're allowed to just leave it there like all the time when Is you say lift spot what's the des what's designating it as a lift spot they they like put a sign and they painted on the street. You know, they painted for a long time. People were getting tickets because they didn't know they put up one sign, a small sign. And it was like four. At least this is like right by my house. There's four spots on the on, and they put up a little sign. Everybody got tickets over hundred dollar tickets. People just kept getting tickets, tickets, tickets. They were towing people and then they painted. And now it's more obvious. So not as many people are getting ticketed. So it's it's like an official spot that they're paying, I think, 400 a year for. Right. So if, if it's designated a spot. 400 a year? Yeah. So if it's designated as a, as a spot for them, then they can park there. But they do have to comply with the city's effort to keep the that's, streets clean. That's, that's correct. That's the, correct. The city, yep. the city has... A permit, mm -hmm. I think, is an MS-14 permit. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm doing this from memory. And the permit is with the state. The city has this permit with the state in order to discharge stormwater into mm -hmm. the sewer. And in order to comply with that permit, they have to follow what's known as a best management practices plan, which is you know cleaning the streets, making sure reduce debris going into the waterways and so forth. In nice. order for the city to be compliant with that permit, they have to, the streets have to be cleaned. And, you know, that I would, what I would do, I would reach out to sanitation and, you know, have them make the move to clean the streets or speak to Lyft. We should maybe speak to Lyft, right? Because That's, Lyft is, Lyft is not a good neighbor right now. It, if this, yeah, it's if, not, it, it's more than just <laughs> Lyft, it's more than one company that has these spots around this area, but um, Lyft is one of them. Um, but they're not, There's you can't communicate with them. It's like- I, can, I, you, can you take a picture of that so-called sign? I'd like to see that, you know, one day oh, in yeah. your travels. I, I, I took a lot of pictures of it, you know. <laughs> but uh, don't you attend the, the transportation meeting as well? Yes, yes. So I, what are I, they talking I, about in the transportation meeting? Well, remember the transportation committee had the resolution about the about the spots? Is that the last one that he brought up at the general board meeting? I think it was the time before this last time. Okay. He um the last one was 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 for the um for the woman's daughter who who was murdered. That right, was, and there was something else along with that. Yeah, the the, the it was before the meeting before the. Okay, the, so I it appears as though they're handling that. They're you know well. So we need to find out exactly what's coming out of that. We don't need two committees 
trying to figure out, you know, what's happening with the lift um, issue. Yeah, so, um, like I just, you know, I want to, it's like the, the transportation committee passed their resolution um, and they recommended fewer spots in the, in such a small area and spread out more. And we recommended, they recommended other spots to put them in, but it's, you know, it's a resolution. It's really advisory, but in the time, you know, nothing's changed since that, you know, resolution went through, nothing's changed. And I think what um, uh, Ms. Bishop has brought up is that it's, they're not, it's they're not getting cleaned. So I think Mr. Herbert is brought up, you know, I wanna, that we have to complain directly and I would wanna know how to do that. You know, his information that he gave me about the cement um, was very helpful. You know, I didn't know some of those regulations and I didn't know that it was a, a type of complaint. And now I, I'm pretty good at that now. Thank you so much for that. and my neighbors as well understand now that you're not allowed to uh, <laughs> run cement into the into our water system anymore but i think people weren't aware because it was so prevalent here that pretty much all those cement trucks do it and now they're mm. doing much less but it's still getting so the um what is it the environmental conservation group they're oh. quite they're quite they're quite efficient I have to say. Yes, they are. <laughs> They're quite yes, they are. And they will come and they will act. They're one of the fewer organizations that I found that really do their job. Mm -hmm. So thank you so, for that. Okay, Anytime. so. so sorry, Dante, Debbie. Go ahead. I, I just have um, one question. Whose idea was it to have lift cars be parked on 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 the streets like that? I mean, how did that come about? That now we are, you know, um, having this kind of uh, a problem. I I I, I don't have the answer for that, but I guess is we it, can. Are the lift cars by? by <laughs> Yeah, I can't hear you. Yeah, I, I think it would be a good i I think it would be a good idea for us to know, and then we can just send a message back over to the transportation, right. saying that you know, um, this is what we'd like to know because maybe they know, and well, and and we don't know who they are, because sometimes you know unless we get to the root, yes. we're never going to get rid of this problem. Exactly. Right. So that's why I asked Dante, I mean, Khalid, to follow up with uh, Dante, you know, to see if he has any information on that. And then. Great um, idea. So that way, you know, we at least have a sense as to what, you know, what is the reason for them having those cars in certain areas. It's part of a plan. Others. It's part of a plan that it's going to happen. You know, we're the, we're the experiment. It's going to continue to happen. It's a long term. Yeah, plan. but it doesn't. Yeah, but we need to know as people that live in the community, what is the purpose, you know, and, you know, to get to the bottom of yes. you know, why they're but doing the, this. The purpose is to have less cars and take away parking from people. So you're miserable and you give up your car and that these companies make the money instead of us keeping our vehicles and our parking spaces. It, it's a plan. It's like, you know, you know, Lyft, City Bike, Open New York, they're all part of the same group. It's all part of the same group. It's, it's, it's a long term plan to profit for people to profit for groups to profit. But apparently, it's not getting to the people that need to know about it. It it by the time the the community residents get it, it's already in the community, and you know, as um correct, correct representatives correct. of the uh, community residents, we should have that information beforehand so that the com the community can give you know a say in terms of what you know is being placed in the community. But most in cases, yeah. you get up and it's placed there overnight, like the bikes on the corner of Nostrand and, and Sterling. I mean, that was like an overnight thing. You got up 
and you walk into the subway and you see this, you know, long, you know, stretch of bicycles. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a good location. It's a subway station, you know, but at the same time, who knew that this was happening? I didn't know. So there's a lot of things that's happening and, you know, we get the information after the fact and, you know, that shouldn't, um, shouldn't be. Um, so in terms of, you know, getting to, you know, the bottom of these lift vehicles, um, you know, people need to know what, you know, what's happening, why they're not moving when there's, you know, street cleaning happening. Why isn't it being enforced? Correct. Why isn't the guidelines being enforced? So a lot of things, there's a lot of, you know, questions that there are no answers to, and there should be answers to them because that's people need to know. That's why it's important that we complain and get, get information out there because it's, you know, everybody's going to get it. We're just like, for whatever reason, first in line to have this. Okay, so mm. I mean, so we need to know exactly what what is the reasoning behind it, and you know, how much more are we going to get? You know, uh, it's we're gonna just know, you know, um, it's like you know, you you first you get the five G poles, now you're getting these lift vehicles. I mean, we need to know and what's going on. You know, um, it's so, private property it's you know it's how it's how companies profit and we we have a political system that's allowing it uh debbie you know the bikes are not um registered i think we all know that if the bike hits knock you down yeah you you, you get nothing on oh, the city bikes on the city bikes Oh really? That's Even true. if you call the controller's office, nothing. It's city property. There's no license. Oh, well, no one should knock you down. With oh the bike my God! And just keep going. Wow, that's a fact. That's 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 crazy. That's a fact. Yeah, that's right. My, yeah, but and 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 it's it's crazy for the seniors that are in the community. You know, who are walking down the sidewalk exactly. and have to deal with, with, with these bikes. And, and yet, not only the city bike, it's it's the bike, the food delivery, the 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 Uber delivery people, you know, they're yes. on the sidewalk. So if you're not, you know, paying attention, I mean they, they come down and sometimes they don't even have a light, you know, to say, okay, you see something, you know, that's shining so that you can move out the way you just see something zoom past you and it's like what just happened here you know i've had to tell many of them you know you know you need to ride on the, the street not on the sidewalk so you know it's a problem a license yeah a license yes correct well and hopefully um, all that will change they're gonna they're gonna have to pay them 30 dollars an hour now something oh just my like God. i think today or yesterday there's a this large companies have to pay the drivers $30 an hour and up. So it's going to be expensive. So I don't think as many people are going to be doing that anymore. Wow. They have to pay. Um, um, what did she say? Who has to pay $30 an hour? The restaurants? The, no, the lar those large companies that the app, the apps that people use to order the food. Oh, the food they're, apps. Yeah. Yes, yes. They, they're the ones okay. that text hire the drivers it's like um like lifted that as well they they it's different a little different but they there's different apps especially the large ones the smaller ones i guess don't have to if it's just like a local restaurant but the larger companies now have to pay i think it's 30 may 30 30 dollars an hour basically wow. Wow. Well, I guess those we'll, drivers. Hear, we'll hear more about that because that it's, just went through for them, so I don't. I don't think it's affected yet, but it it's it's going to be. So that might that might mean fewer drivers. More than likely, if if they are not being paid the thirty dollars. Yeah, well, it's a double edged sword because it's like you know a lot of people are making money through that, you know, using. Well, it's either that or they're gonna do like the uh, the. Oh, the dollar vans were doing on Flatbush Avenue. They would, you know, I guess, operate in 
under you know different um sub you know <laughs> i don't even want to say contractors but they were doing their own thing so maybe the by the food delivery people probably formed their own little coalition here there and everywhere maybe. and then they, you know they'll have to be regulated yeah. at some point you know i mean technically it's supposed to be better for us in the end if there's yeah. no right there's less pollution less cars so it's supposed to be better for the air quality but then we're getting run over right you see how things like when you make a plan for something like they put the cars in the street seems like it's going to be good for some people but then there's too many and they're not they're not moving for street sweeping so there's not a lot of foresight i think going on with some of these i think people. enforcement there, there there has to be enforcement and that's not happening i don't know if they don't have the manpower but based on the fact that, you know, just to get Mr. Herbert, the vehicle that he was complaining about towed, there was all this back and forth. And, you know, reading some of the emails, it's like, okay, we're waiting for a tow truck. And I'm like, okay, well, how many tow trucks are there? Is it only one for the five boroughs? You know, this is crazy. Um, so it's like, it. You know, you yes. really wonder what's going on with with our taxpaying dollars. When you know you 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 know you're calling about something, and you know you, they're telling you that there's no, you know, no vehicle to send to remove it. So it's like, you know, it's 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 um, even with three one one, the system is not working the way it should be. So, but I you know I guess we have to continue to follow up on that. Is those issues that are before us. And um, so moving along, so we spoken about the Bedford Avenue uh, project. Um, and, uh, Dante and, had sent something else with regards to the Boulevard uh, in front of McDonald's. The and DP emergency contractor uh, resume work. I believe that was at... Um, Bedford and uh, Sullivan um, yeah. and continue to as to do excavation for the sewer repair on the second condition. He said that the contractor is also performing continuous bypass pumping operations uh, and um, completion is tentative um, for the second week of December. So hopefully that should be somewhere about now. Which it seems I believe... like seems like that project. It seems like today, like I said at the beginning, is is complete. It's hard to okay, tell. Okay, so okay, so that like it, it seems like it is. They weren't there. Okay, and, so that's probably what and they, they informed they put a lot of Fences out. They put a lot of barricades out on my street and take up to t to reserve parking spots for themselves. Right. And they 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 didn't put those out in the street. They're on the sidewalk. Has a okay, so they probably completed that, yeah. But but the one on the one on um Empire between McKeever and uh, Franklin, that's like that's the one that's the most mystifying. Well, I guess they're still working on that one, so we have to follow that's up to see what still there, like big hole in the street. Yeah, water main break, collapsed sewer. You know that was a collapse. So, okay, so, what you know, I think it needs to be like I know, you know, East Flatbush is going to get a lot of work because of Vital Brooklyn, and it just seems like measures aren't being taken to protect the infrastructure of our city with these big developments. Responsibility is that? Is it? It seems like it's like oh, it's just so old; it collapses, but. You know, we could see how the the work was being done there that it caused the sidewalk to separate from the street, a huge rut. And, you know, we complained about it and filed reports and it was just kind of brushed off. And then it, there's a big collapse. So and then another collapse and another collapse. So was there going to be more? Probably. Well, the thing about it is with these infrastructure problems, we wouldn't know what's going on underground, <laughs> under the surface. And a lot of it is happening under the surface. 
So it's not until something like that, major like that happened, we you, you know, know there, really there get were, to see what's definite, going on. Like what I'm saying is there were there were there were very clear signs that something was happening. Like the sidewalk starts separating, separating, mm -hmm. separating, and they keep putting gravel and cement in. And it's like the street starts going down and then there's a pothole and then there's an explosion. You know, until there something really bad happened, they just brushed it off. Whereas I think something could have been done mm -hmm. sooner to prevent it. It's like preventative care. Like you take care of your city, like you take care of your body. You do preventative care and you're mindful to not cause big collapses, right? And when things are allowed to happen that aren't regulated, that that's what's happening here, you know? It's not just... And the contractors, they're making a lot of money, so they're fine. Like, you know, the more collapses, the better for them. Well, that's all taxpayers, taxpayers' so, dollars exactly. at work. Exactly. So, so they have to, this is what the city does before they start projects. They contract to see who's the best bidder and all these things. It's a process. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, happens, you know, um, before these projects get started and sometimes they are scheduled to get started they don't get started sometimes the money is removed and going to something else so there's a lot of stuff that happens in terms of these capital projects that's what they're called uh mr herbert i see you have your hand up go ahead please okay um first tara do you have a location where those lift cars are like the intersection because i just typed up a complaint on there Website. Well, there's there's some yes. on Su Sullivan and um and Ludlam um, is so one. Um, is Su Sullivan on Sullivan, Sullivan what place? Yes, yeah, Sullivan Place. And where? Uh, Ludlam, just off of Ludlam. It would be uh okay west of Ludlam on the um on the. No, that's all I need. Just Sullivan and Lud Ludlam. And where's the other one? There's there's four spots there. Okay. Well, really, it's three. It's marked as three, but four cars can fit there, honestly. And then the other one is on um, Stoddard and um, Montgomery. Stoddard. Spell that. S-T-A-R-R-D-A-R-D. S-T-O-D-D-A-R-D. S-T-O-D-D-A-R-D. Place. A-R-D. Started place and the intersection. It's it's like right on the corner of Montgomery and um it's on Stoddard just off of Montgomery. Okay. All right. So let's let's see what happens with these. So and those I'll, I'll are see those little can... side streets in, in in that area there. They're like small streets. Right. Mm -hmm. And with, with, the, yeah. with the city of yes, with those new uh city of yes amendments they're you know you're going to be allowed to have any kind of business on any corner so residential spaces will now be allowed to have businesses there and i think that's why they're they're putting the cars there because technically those cars are supposed to be on commercial off of commercial corridors where in our neighborhood they're not off of commercial corridors they're right on they're on resident right in the middle of a residential neighborhood but apparently that's what the the talk is is because these these new ch these changes that are going to come with the city of yes all of the corners are going to be able to be commercial so there's they're like future planning i guess is that, does that it's as though there's a plan in place already because well, if those things are in there, place it means proposal. that there, there is a plan in place there's a proposal city when okay, the city so it would be good to know how much the transportation committee has, how much information they have on that. Yeah, the because... Euros has a lot of information about it as well, but they're um they're meeting right now, and I can't go because I'm here. So because I've been going to their meetings and they've been talking okay. about it extensively. So, so okay, since... so we don't but... have uh, Khalid um refer that information to Dante so it can be presented at the next uh service cabinet meeting to find out more from DOT what you know what are the you know what are the 
you know, what is the procedure for the, those vehicles being parked there and not moved um, when, you know, there's, uh, you know, sweeping and cleaning procedures in place, um, you know, on certain days. And, you know, it's, it's, the, it, you know, it's mind boggling that they don't move the vehicles because, you know, they have, a right to park there, but I'm sure that they have a right to follow, pro, you know, the procedures that the residents that live in that community have to follow as well. So that's kind of, you know, boggling to me. Um, but again, you know, we'll have um, a follow up on that. Well, uh, one, one, one thing that I'd like to mention is I believe, Khalid, can you confirm this, that DOT hasn't been showing up at those cabinet meetings? It seems like DOT is MIA. I can't speak to that. Um, but Dante Khalid wouldn't be able to speak to that because he doesn't attend those meetings. But Dante talks about it every time. Khalid, do you remember? I can't speak to that. I'm sorry. Uh, Dante is on those meetings, but um, can't speak but to I that. But I definitely will follow up with Dante to find out, you know, all if right. that is true. Thank um, you. I mean, all of the service, you know, um, agencies are supposed to be you know at that meeting whether it's the commissioner or you know someone that is you know a liaison or something for whatever the agency is that's what that is all about they're supposed to be at that meeting um you know to provide you know responses to the services that you know people have concerns about so i'm not uh, sure what's going on there but um are you know it would be good meetings? to know are those open to the public or are they private? The service cabinet meetings? Yeah. Oh, I've attended a lot of um service cabinet meetings in Manhattan. Um, have, um for Brooklyn, it would be at Borough Hall. Is that where it's held, uh, Khalid? Well, from what I hear is on Zoom. So with Dante. So they're I not in person? They're not meeting in person? Uh no, I don't think so. Well, maybe they do. Okay. But... Well, From whether what they're heard. meeting in person or not, it's supposed to happen at the, uh, because I know in Manhattan, they're happening in person. The borrow service cabinet, the borrow board and these meetings, they are back in person. So I'm not sure what's happening at Borrow Hall bro um, in Brooklyn. So yeah. that's where that's where they normally happen. Yeah, oh, really? I'm not too familiar with the meetings, though, because, you know, it's him that is doing them. So and I'm yeah in the board. Uh, in the back. But so. I guess that's just a phone call to Borough Hall to find out if the meetings are in person or not. Yeah. So that, you know, um, and they probably would have that on their website in terms of, you know, when the meetings are happening, when they are scheduled. So that would be a good place to look as well. Um, yes. Yeah, so, and Brad Landers took away Eric Adams' emergency powers. Well, there was an article today about that. So does that mean we have to meet in person now? Like what is going on with that? That's another thing that needs to, that I'm wondering about. Well, I guess we would have to wait and see how that unfolds. If Brad Landers did, I haven't heard anything about that. So, it, you know, that would be something to, you know, wait and see how that, you know, unfolds. But I would definitely follow up on that tomorrow to see, I mean, if there's anything, any articles on that, <laughs> if Landers did that, you know, um, apparently it's definitely articles about it. Yeah. Well, I guess, yeah, he has the purse string, so I guess he can pull it at any time. So maybe well, that's one of those things. I don't know. That's why, because of, uh... yeah, yeah, he has the purse string. Um, okay. So we moving right along here. We are going to go into our new business. And um, I actually, you know, put two uh, in, you know, topics on here that I felt was um, important. Although we did discuss the um, the pre -pre uh, presenter information already, um, so we can just uh, move beyond that since we are waiting for a date and time from Dante. Um, so the other thing on there was to um, speak to the uh, Environmental Protection Committee goals for 2024. Um, and uh, 
reevaluate our um list of from October 16, 2023 meeting. And um that was one of the issues that I felt we needed to focus on. Um, because there's only so much we can do within the time that we have to um before you know, there's another person chairing a, a meeting. So in the event that, you know, we can't get to everything, we need to focus on the things that I guess are more sensitive than others. So, I mean, we don't want to take on too much because, you know, sometimes a lot of things may get dropped by the wayside. So I, you know, I would say, you know, for me, the focus would be on the things that, you know, the drainage system and things that needs to be, you know, done in order to prevent certain things, which would be water. And that has been a bit big problem for us now. So um, that's one of my concerns right now. Um, so if anyone else has anything else that they may want to add, you know, that would be helpful. But um, I think that all uh, you know, drain sewer system is definitely, you know, has taken a hard hit with all the rain that we've been getting. And in terms of, you know, trying to avoid that from happening in the future, I guess, you know, we need to focus on, you know, making sure that somebody's hearing what we have to say or is responding to our questions and um, is able to provide us with the questions that we may have. Hence the reason why I mentioned that we should, you know, put some questions together in terms of the catch basins and anything else that may pertain to, you know, the water being, you know, diverted to certain areas. So other areas are not inundated with the water. So things like that we need to um, come up with. I will try to, you know, come up with some questions and I think that everyone else should you know, do the same um, so that we can have that information available for Dante once he has a meeting schedule, because that was one of the requests that was made from um, the DEP contact that he may, you know, he spoke to. So just okay. something that, you know, people want to, you guys want, may want to um, keep in mind for our January or February meeting, whichever the date is for you know, schedule for um by Dante and, and the DE contact. You. I'm sorry. No, I, I thought it was on you. I'll, <laughs> I'll, <I said laughs> no, I'll, that's fine. I'll send, yeah. I'll send you my. I'll send you the questions um by tomorrow. I'll send you. Okay, and tomorrow. then the parking and towing issues again. You know, we are still. I okay. guess we still we're gonna have that problem because, you know, when you have more <laughs> more vehicles than parking space, you know, it becomes a problem. You have developments that's still going up and I'm not sure whether parking is a part of that plan, but, you know, so it's it's an ongoing issue and um, it's, it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon um, or, you know. I so know I think a goal, a goal that we can make. Yes. Or put forth with regards to, um, you know, rem removal of vehicles in order to make sure that uh, the city can clean the streets is that we should do our best to get a task force together with us, the DEP, um, sanitation, and the police department. Again, right? We should have that as a goal to get them in one room and come up with a strategy in order to address this concern. I'm not sure we'll be able to get them in a one room, but it would be probably, unless we actually attend, and even if we attend the borough service cabinet meeting, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, or it, even, this, even this platform, even this platform. Right, but then they may not be able to be all be at the same meeting you know, we may have to, mm. you know, schedule them at different times in order to, you know, right. come up with something. Uh, 
it's but um, it's it's a good goal in order to make contact with each of those right. individuals because they all have they all play an important part in right. making sure that the streets are clean in order to make sure that we do not have flooding uh, at the corners and catch basins and so forth. So I mean, I what I think is it would be a good thing to make a recommendation to bring them to a board meeting, a general mm -hmm. board meeting so that all of the, the you know the, all of the committees are there and people can get their you know the answers to the questions that they have even better so you know maybe we can make a recommendation to you know or to the chair or you know in terms of you know mm -hmm. doing this i mean this has to do with service how many times are we going to ask the same question about a service that's happening the rod problem, the water problem, the, you know, so these are things that we need as a community, as, as community board members, we all need to be, you know, mindful of all these things and be, you know, involved and understand what the process is and how to maneuver, you know, the system so mm -hmm. that the services can be provided in our community. And I find Agreed. that that is very problematic where, you know, we have to, wait for responses we have to you know i mean it, it it's it's quite disturbing that you know <laughs> today now you know we we are sitting waiting for responses on things that's happening right before our eyes and they're right. happening happening so often it's like you know well when do you draw the line and say okay we need to do we need information we need answers right now mm -hmm. you know so I would definitely, you know, make that recommendation to the board um, or the, to the chair, rather, that, you know, we have a, a, a meet, a, a, these uh, service providers come and prevent, present to the board at one of the uh, general board meetings, whether it's um, whether we can get two at a time or maybe all of them, because if we try to do... <laughs> do it at one meeting, you know, it, some things may not be able to be a part of the agenda. So that would be something that, um, but I will definitely, you know, recommend that to, um, to the, the, uh, the chair. Those meetings, the general board meetings tend to be pretty packed with a lot of, uh, a lot going on, a lot to vote on. Well, there is and yeah there's there is a lot so it you might know, be um, it might be wise to have some type of a a town hall or hold like a town hall and in, in say our meeting and, and invite them and so we could like really spend the time that we need to on it and invite other uh other committees to a, to a meeting so we could really talk about it in depth well, I think the I, whole meeting, right? Yeah, I think we need to do this as a whole, as a board, as a as a a general thing where, you know, whether, you know, it's a town hall, whether it's a, a a general board meeting, you know, but these things, these, you know, these outstanding issues need to be addressed. So, so you're going mean, to you're going to suggest that those three groups meet, come to the general board meeting and present and talk to all of us and we ask questions. At once, of course, if it can happen, if they can all come together at you know at 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 a meeting, um, at some point to address some of these issues, because if we are waiting for responses from the borrow service cabinet meeting, which happens monthly, um, and we are not getting it, you know, if we can get them there in person, you know, it makes sense. I mean. So I, you know, I would definitely, you know, make that recommendation um, for a full board uh, presentation and, you know, or, or discussion in terms of the services that we receive and what, you know, residents would like to see in the community. And, you know, even if we involve, you know, residents to, you know, attend the, that meeting as well which i'm sure that they probably more than likely will um there was a woman at the last general board meeting who was speaking about the uh jewish uh supermarket on um empire there 
and the rats that you know because the garbage is not done the way they you know they're supposed to um package the garbage i mean and they, it's just thrown all over the place and it's not fair to her that she has to deal with that you know issue where there's rats all over you know the place because of that i mean then they need to enforce, you know, what's going on over there. And I'm not sure what happened with that, but I did ask Dante if, you know, he was able to um, speak with anyone um, because I mentioned it at the uh, the last general board meeting for him to follow up. And um, he said he would. I'm not sure when the uh, next service cabinet meeting is, but hopefully it's sometime this, you know, this month if it didn't happen already, um, but... There's a lot of um, oh gosh, I hope that doesn't issues happen that here. we need answers to. Yeah, the rats are terrible. Oh, they're horrible. They're all over. I see dead. I mean, like they're the, some of them. They're the the cars run over them, and it's like you just see this flat thing in the street. You wouldn't know unless you <laughs> go there and look. And they're huge. You know, it's like my God, what is this? We we have rats in our neighborhood, in our area, when yeah. they first started digging up on Empire. And we, uh, several of my neighbors, we all went to the Rat Academy. You know, the Rat Academy. Oh yeah. Go to those meetings. Yeah, I've been to one. We yeah. did a lot of calling, like a lot of calling, reporting. And, you know, they came and investigated and also going to the Academy and figuring yeah. out different ways to deal with them. We've had a lot less, a lot less problems in this like, Maybe the last year has been actually pretty good, I have to say, but it took a lot of work. It's like with the cars, you have to put in a lot of effort, you know, with these organizations. Like that falls under us, right? EP is like rats. rats well, garbage, I mean, you have you have right? the health department, you have you know, social, I mean, the, um, what's that other committee? Um, health and social services. They, um, you know, so... I mean, that would be something that more than likely, you know, we'd have to involve um, the health department in because I know that they have a program there for, you know, rat abatement. I don't know, you know, what what they do now with this current rat situation because the whole plan that the mayor had was to, you know, take care of that or the plan that's in place now is to oh, take that's right. that. He has so a rat right. czar, right? A rat czar. Exactly. So, you know, I'm that? not sure if it's being enforced or not, because I see a lot of things happening other than what's supposed to be happening. Um, so I'm not sure that any enforcement is taking place because people are still putting garbage out before they're supposed to do it mm -hmm. and things like that. So there's a lot happening that's not supposed to be happening, but it, there's no enforcement. So, you know, it seems as though we're going to have that garbage, the rat problem for a very long time. And with all the um, development going on, they're running all over the place. They're running wild. Hmm. So, you know, I think that the, you know, the rat abatement should start in those areas where, you know, they should be baited, you know, so that they're not running wild. Um, so it, that's it another better. area that needs to be enforced. It's it's better here, but I think because we worked on it. You know, yeah, because quickly. in my in our in my this area here, a lot of the neighbors they have those little black boxes, because at one point they were running all over the block, and that's <laughs> when they were doing the work on the streets, um, on Nostrand Avenue and that area, putting installing the new pipes. And the it's lines actually, for the, um, yep. yeah. The last time I saw a big rat was, was on Sterling, honestly. Yeah. On Sterling by, um, by no strength. Yeah. Yeah. And then some of those areas, you know, the garbage can, you know, it's not always, it's all, sometimes it's overflowing and I'm not sure what, you know, what can be done about that. Even the little garbage cans that, you know, were placed there to um, avoid. Sometimes you see them open and, you know, just garbage just thrown on top. And I'm like, well, 
what's the purpose of putting a garbage can there if people are not going to put it in the inside the thing? They well, just I throw think it people are dumping. It looks like people are dumping there, like dumping, like it's not just people like walking on the street throwing in there. It's like I saw bags and a lot of yeah. excessive dumping in that over there. When I, I, I take the train over there a lot, you know, to walk in them. Yeah. Yeah, because I took some pictures of, you know, as I'm walking in the different areas of the, you know, a lot of things that I see going on. And I'm, you know, I'm like, you know, people need to be better, do better. How you, well, you know, you're living in a community and it's like, you you know, you're, you're behaving like this. What do you expect? And then you want to blame for sanitation for not cleaning? But you have to do your part as a resident of this community. Yeah, we got that can back that they took away for Juve um, much sooner than last year. But um, it came back and it makes it actually makes a giant difference um, in our area with the amount of trash and stuff. So I'm really grateful that trash can came back. So I think it's good to have them in communities. Like Remember you had suggested too as well, Debbie? the bigger trash cans. Exactly, and, and those, that's what I was just about to some say. Some of those because, commercial corridors. Right, exactly. Let's put that on the list. So, you know, because we definitely need some of those large, you know, the larger ones because you can step on it and, you you know, you put your garbage, your your, your cans and bottles, and then the garbage in the other one. It's, you know, some, we definitely need some of those. Yeah, I see those in other, you know, in commercial quarters, like Chinatown has a lot yeah. of them. and Yeah, let's get yeah. those. Especially like on places where there's a lot of, you know, like you should probably have one on your corner where there's there all There should be dumping. definitely one on Nostrum Avenue, especially in areas where there's, you know, a lot of traffic, you know? Exactly. So, there's yeah. a lot of kids and people going through there. That's probably... A Maybe we could make a suggestion, a list with a suggestion. But I did send a, when... I, I did send something to the board, a, a picture of that hand to the the board office a while ago. So I'm not sure what like came in, up in the of community it, but I will needs again. Or, I know Crystal say Crystal paid for some garbage cans that they, they put around as well. So I wonder if we could get like some kind of a grant or how we could get money set aside for at least one right we could we should start with one if we can be an experiment for these cars well, there like, should be we... like a pilot pilot program where you know you start with one and or you know if you can get more than one then you try to you know put them in <coughs> two different areas and see how that you know how that works but um we definitely need them in certain areas where there's more traffic, um, you know, by people and, you know, more food areas um, where people, you know, can at least learn, you know, what recycling is because you would have the two bins next to each other and they're large, you know, in size and you just step on and put your garbage in there. I'm going to get another picture when I'm in Manhattan again and um, try to find out what, you know, what's a brand, what's a name on there and um, forward it again. Or maybe I can call sanitation myself and find out, you know, what's, how do we go about getting those cans? Um, so we'll work on, see what's, what we can do. So Debbie. Them. Yes. Debbie, my darling. Yes. I just want to say to you that, um, you know, the work that has been handed down to us as um, you as the chair and us as a member of the Environmental um, Protection Group, I just think we don't applaud ourselves enough for the work that is being done. I, I think we are so anxious to make sure that our neighbors and our community are really well taken care of, that we forget that we are doing the work. Yeah, Mr. absolutely. Herbert and yourself. And I just feel at some point we need to recognize that we are doing something. Absolutely. I mean, it's overwhelming to think 
of all the things we have done since we came on this Environmental Protection Committee. Debbie, you look back at all the things, the suggestions that have been made, the, you know, um, Dante going out to get all of these things done. And I was saying that just on Thursday to a member of my community who said that the community board wasn't doing anything. And I said to him, no, you don't understand. Look now, we're talking about lift cars that we never even knew were coming. Yes. We don't know how many of them were there, are there. Nobody told us that the bikes were coming. We got up one day and the bikes were there. That's right. We got up one day and the, you know, the towers were there. And, and I said, it is not us. And some of these things were put in place before we became That's members right. of, you know, because we are just one arm of a whole political, you know. There you go, there you go. Thing. So, but I just want to thank Mr. Herbert for his wisdom and, and Tara for her tenacity. And for joining the committee, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Tara yep. for her tenacity, you know, yes. she's going out there. And Debbie, I say to you all the time, I don't know how you do it, girl. <laughs> I just want to thank God for you and I, ask God to continue to shower you with the blessing of vision. You know, um, I, I think it's um, the saints that say, you know, we can't do everything, but oh God, give us the wisdom to know the difference between the two. Yes. I think it's St. Francis. And I just want to thank the universe for granting us the ability to first yes. become a part of the board, to volunteer and to be so empathetic and be so honest about what we want to see done to make our community a better place. I want to applaud all of you. And I want to ask us to remember, while we might be overwhelmed, that we have done a great amount of work. We have. Thank you, Thank you Bishop. And I second that emotion. And yes. I will take that as your words of encouragement because you didn't you didn't do it earlier. <laughs> um, yes, and it, it, and and it's okay because you know, Debbie, when when I knew that I was coming to the meeting, you were in my thought. Just this small <laughs> handful. It's a handful of people. Yes. And I thought about in a time like this, Debbie, we are in humanitarian crisis. They we are. Yes. You know, and the fact that we can be in our own homes talking tonight about how we're going to make our community better. There are people dying. Yes. You know, there are countries where the water, we're talking about the drain here, water have taken lives. Yes. Remove homes. And yes. that's around the world. Yes. Every time you look, it's another tsunami, another storm, mm -hmm. you know, another hurricane that is taking. We are so blessed. Another we fire. Are so yep. blessed. Yeah. And uh, modern nature, I believe, is upset for the things that we have done to Earth. There you and go. She's doing her little thing. <laughs> there you go. We are only <laughs> asking for mercy. Yes. Grant us mercy to do what we can. Yes. As we walk the streets, grant yeah. us mercy to do what we can to give life to yeah. those that are suffering. Grant us mercy that we will speak on the behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves. Yeah. Mercy that we will continue to be empathetic to the human cause, not to give up on our humanity, but to work hard to ensure that our district office and our chairman, yes. and all those people will be blessed for the work that is being done. Yes, yes. God bless you, Debbie. Thank you. God thank bless you, you Mr. Herbert. And thank God you, bless Bishop. You, yes, thank you. So That's without terrible. much, without further ado, does anyone else have anything to add before we adjourn? I think we've discussed a lot tonight and hopefully we can follow up on some of these outstanding issues and try to, you know, keep things well, moving. I wanna, 
Yeah, I just want to thank everyone for being here tonight and showing up on time and working together. It's really important when we have good attendance. So, and then everybody's here caring. And yes, um, the other the other thing I just research a little bit about it is the um, congestion pricing. Oh my God! <laughs> think about that. You know, I, I I'm not a fan, and I think it'll be negatively impact our air quality here. Yes, I think that's what's going to happen to us. So, I've been thinking about that. You know, our air quality a lot in terms of environmental protection, as you know, well as the other things we brought up. But I, I just wanted you know everybody to think about that and maybe talk about it how that will impact us. I think we're going to have more cars here because cars aren't going to go to Manhattan and we're just going to have more pollution and more traffic. So and our congestion prices will come here too. Yeah, you it certainly so? will because it's, oh, it's yes. the congestion pricing is not new. It's not new at all. Yeah. yeah. It'll, well, we it'll be downtown Brooklyn city. before you know it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Herbert, I'm voting no, no personally on the congestion but pricing. We, but we I just have to watch and see how it all unfolds. I think we could make our comments and our votes count. Absolutely. Yes. I don't think we just have to watch it come for us. You know, this exactly. Is like, we this have is to something... see how, yeah, how it plays out. And I think try we can to... do yeah. something now. So, you know, hopefully, well, maybe transportation has something going on on that as well, because, you know. They haven't talked they, about it. They've been super busy. They've had a oh, lot of resolutions. They haven't spoken about it? No. Uh, well, hopefully, we, some, you know, they may bring it up with some, somebody will bring it up at some point in the transportation committee meeting, um, because it's live and direct. And it's going to happen just like they they planted two new trees on this block. The million trees, uh, your project is still, you know, working. Two new trees on Sterling between Rogers and those. Wow. Yeah. Nice. We have and one in Union. Yeah. And again, you know, you see them, you know, doing what they have to do with the ground. And then next thing you see. You get up and you walk out there and you see the trees standing there with the two uh, things that they put to side beside it to protect it until it starts blooming, and that's what happens. Yeah, and then Debbie, those trees they, trees grow and they don't take care of them, and then everybody's yeah, upset. I, I, <laughs> the, the, the the residents have to clean up the leaves. <laughs> Ter 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 I want to say, Debbie, I finally can see my next door neighbor across the street. Oh. They trim the trees. Oh, very good. <laughs> yes. We had to call them. I well, I wrote to the commission. I know. I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not starting from the ground up. I go directly to the head and I write a letter. We. I can't. I'm walking here at night and I can't see myself because the light is out. Yes. The tree is over and over the, the light, and you need the tree to be pruned before the uh, transportation can come out and put a new fixed you or whatever they need to do. I mean, somebody needs to make sense out of this. So they finally came and they pruned from Rogers to Nostrand. And then no sooner I told Dante, I said, look, this light needs to be, there needs to be a light. It's dark there. It's pitch dark. You come in there, you can't see anything. And you're coming in at late at night. So they finally came and installed the, uh, the, 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 you know, replaced it. And so now there's light there. We can still use more light, but at least, you know, it's back, it's working again. Yeah, they need more arborists. They need more people taking care of the trees regularly. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it seems as though most of the agencies are overwhelmed. The service agencies are overwhelmed because, you know, it's, it's people are, you know, leaving government like, you know, quite often so it's not you know some jobs are not jobs the things that need a schedule to be done they're not going to be done when they should be done even though the parks department tell you we have a schedule of when things are done but 
given the fact that, you know, they don't have enough manpower, it's not going to get done. Well, it's also a matter it's scheduled of people, to be done, but people or agencies have a schedule, but then some people jump the line if they have influence with say, well, it depends on their the urgency, mayor. The, their urgency. Yeah. Or the money. If you have or, enough well, money, yeah. you're going to get seen by say the FDNY inspectors before well, that, that too, <laughs> that, or, you know, the, that's uh, happening. or something with a developer or something like that. That's why, you know, a lot of things happen, and then next thing you know, they you they wind up in jail because they're doing wrong things. But that's not a part of our agenda. So, but we will continue this discussion. I, you know, I think that we had a good discussion tonight again, Thank and you. hope that we can continue to do so. Um, and I look forward to seeing everyone at the. General December twenty first. Oh. Isn't it December twenty first meeting? Oh my. Um, Debbie, I'm not sure how that's gonna work out, but Debbie, we'll see. Debbie, yes, I I will not be at the twenty first meeting uh -huh. on December twenty first. I'm uh, my office is making it known at the office because I'm doing something in the Caribbean concern in. Um, environmental protection because you know the Caribbean islands are in in distress because of the water. They're in the dire need. Rains that are falling. Oh, so that's doing well, well. That that has been a, a long standing problem. Yes. Drainage the drainage yes. system in the Caribbean is terrible. Yes. And the so neighbor I'm don't want the neighbor don't want this. This neighbor don't want that. That neighbor. But you all have to come <laughs> together in turn in order to get something done. So exactly. that this water goes to the main drain and nobody wants anything running through their yard. Well, how do you get it done if you don't try to work together? I was well, just speaking to someone the other day about that. It's 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 it's, an, it's amazing. It's horrible. It's, it's, yeah, it's this 21st you know? is going to be difficult for me as well. It's horrible. Horrible. You know, so hopefully you can get, maybe you can, Bishop, you can, you know, make Get something well, done for them. Well, I'm doing. I'm. I'm working with the. I'm set to work with the the universities, the um UTech University in, in Jamaica and the okay. um, University of the West Indies, and also I'm going to Barbados. That's my next stop, and okay. I'm including some things with um students at Med Medgar Ever Med Medgar Evers College. Okay, you good. know to. So while we're looking at the groundwork, there's also that behind the scene work that needs to be done in terms oh, yeah. of research, you yes. know, to yes. know how we can protect our islands. Yeah, well, the, the thing about the island is they need to have people, you know, you can't have people just building houses, going and, and removing <laughs> trees and things I that know. support mm -hmm. the soil and build I houses. Know. That is problematic and nobody nobody enforces it. So it's, I I know people that died from that because they built a house, the rain and came, the rain there was came. no support, and that was it. So there needs to be enforcement. You know, I don't know what's going on in the Caribbean, and I'm so sick and tired of hearing the same thing over and over and over again. Over it's and really everybody over wants over. that waterfront view. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, Herbert, it's not the waterfront view. It's those that go to the mountain. To the mountains and, and yeah, and, and and the mountain is now coming down because it's coming there down. Are no trees oh. there, coming with down with the roots to hold. No, yeah. oh, they remove the trees. Yes. Yeah, they remove the trees. Oh, yeah, they remove yeah. the trees. It's it's horrible, horrible. It is horrible. When there's a it, rainstorm, there, forget it. Everything comes down. Everything, everything just comes everything. right down, it's like everything a mudslide. Everything comes, the Rock soil slides. and everything. Yep. Yes. Everything. Oh. Okay, so to Not be good. continued, Bishop, we will get an update when you upon your return from yes. your, I just your have... project. No and, problem. Um, so Excuse I me. will adjourn this meeting. It's now eight forty one. Wait, PM. wait, wait, wait. Khalid yes. has something. Yeah, wait. Oh yeah, I just wanted to say those who are not are not going to make the general board meeting, just please contact the office. Um, you know, uh, I have yes. it written down, but just you know, so we have it in writing. Can you email? Yes. Please. I yeah. don't know if I can. I don't know if I can come or not. I'm gonna try. I, I, I you know, will. but it's such I a will. difficult yeah. day. 
Yeah, that's why I asked. So just if so you, when you, you so figure it you out, guys, just you need to reach out so you can be excused. Yes, I will. I will. Yes. Oh, okay. I'll be there. Okay. Mr. Okay, Herbert, you'll be Herbert. everywhere. I'm going to try. Yeah. <laughs> it's, hopefully it'll be a short meeting. Yes. He's been missing the general board meeting, though. He's been traveling so much. Well, yeah, gotta, but he, I'm he's always usually listening. On, no. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's yeah. always online. Very good. But he said he'd be it. back in two weeks, so he might make this one. <laughs> I will be there. Okay. <laughs> I want to be your life, Mr. Herbert. Hopefully, I want to be your life. Every day is a Saturday over here. There you go. <laughs> All right. Want to live your okay, life. Okay, so. Good night. It, it's 842. We we'll adjourn at 842. Right. Thank you, Khalid. Love to all of you. Khalil, have a nice second night. Second for meeting adjourned, and then we have to uh, second it, remember? We got to follow yes. Robert's rules. Okay. So, second it. So, Teresa, uh, second uh, the meeting, the adjour okay. adjournment. Yes. Good night, everyone. Okay. Good night. Good night. Thank have you. A good night. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.